Cambrian ecosystems over 500 million years ago were the first time where large multicellular life on Earth came to prominence. And with all of the diversity of the time, it figures that all of these millions of years later, we'd still be finding many new animals to this day, and that has indeed continued to be the case. Found in the Sirius Passet fossil locality in North Greenland, 13 specimens of a previously unknown invertebrate were described, with them ranging from 2.2 to up to 20 centimetres in length, 30 if you count their antennae. The variation in their preservation was wide-ranging due to the differing levels of decay and secondary mineralization, with there being varying clarities on the preservation of both anatomical features and internal organs. Named as Tamori bestia coprii, their name meaning fear-causing beast in Latin, and their species name being named after the Korea Polar Research Institutes, or Copri, after their support and ongoing assistance regarding the field expeditions in the regions. With their great preservation, their classification was fairly straightforward, with them being described as stem ketogenaths, known by their common name of arrowworms, which today are small planktonic animals with some interesting characteristics, like some being venomous, as well as being key ambush predators of other planktonic animals like copepods and cladocerans. This classification was made evidence with the preservation of a ventral ganglion along with lateral neuron somata, which is present in Keatingnas to the exclusion of any other living animal group, and also serves as a means of grouping other similar animals. Amasquia sagittiformis from the Burgess Shale shares a very similar body plan and presumed lifestyle with Keatingnas, and for a good while was debated about whether or not they would be closely related to arrowworms as part of a stem lineage. The absence of grasping spines in them led to an initial rejection of any relationship with Keatingnas, though more recent studies have turned up evidence that they had an internal jaw apparatus, which is quite similar to what is seen in Nathotherans. These animals and Keatingnas have been found from phylogenetic studies to clay together in a group known as Keatingnathothera, given they share a good number of similar features. The shared presence of lateral and caudal fins, coupled with a distinct head region and jaw apparatus, as well as the most important feature being the ventral ganglion, firmly places Amasquia alongside Timori bestia, which is exceptionally helpful given such completeness of the latter could help in classifying some other poorly known invertebrates. But time will tell as to what will come up. The fins in Timori bestia are highly developed and elaborate, closely resembling fish and cephalopods which propel themselves by way of oscillatory fin movements, which is quite different to living arrow wombs, which instead propel themselves forwards by flexing their bodies. Such an anatomical structure may well explain the needs, therefore, for a high degree of nervous signalling, which would have been helped by the well-developed ventral ganglion. This anatomy and their large size for the time was very impressive, considering the group they belong to are candidates for some of the earliest bilaterian carnivores to have colonised the water column, as their grasping spines occur as tiny microfossils across formations of the lowest parts of the Cambrian periods, and the animals like Tamora bestia were occupying a much higher trophic position in pelagic food chains compared to their living arrowworm relatives, being comparable to sharks and seals in regards to their relevance, though of course on a much smaller scale. Their status as important predators in their Cambrian ecosystem can also be proved from another aspect of their great preservation, being the preservation of their gut contents. Within some of them were the remains of a rather common invertebrate by the name of Isoxus, which even with their solid, external defences, proved to not always be enough to ward off their predation. Of course, as with so many animals over time, these large worms died off, being superseded by other, ultimately more diverse groups, namely the panarthropods, including the largest kinds of radiodonts like Anomalocaris. Therefore, the serious passet locality where Tamora bestia was found from may indeed show us a snapshot of a transition period that was occurring in the early through mid Cambrian, whereby differing animals were beginning to gradually replace one another up and down the water column. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.